Thank you for being here. Good morning. It's my pleasure. So you've had a pretty big high, the straw poll, all sorts of other polls. How are you going to capitalize on this? How are you going to keep this momentum up? First, we're going to stick with our strategy by going to the people. As an example, the straw poll in Florida last week, which really got the attention of a lot of people, because it differed from a lot of the other straw polls in that actual delegates were cast in the straw poll. And because my win was so convincing, it caused people to take note that there's something going on out here other than how the media is portraying this being a one, two person race. It's not just a two, one, two person race. Let me, let me start by asking you some of these questions. Yes. We've just seen what President Obama said last night about that incident at the Florida debate where there was booing in the audience when a gay soldier started to speak. Nobody said anything. You didn't, Rick Santorum, none of the others did. Do you wish you had said something, intervened at that moment? Well, the thing that's being overlooked is that in the heat of a debate, when you have exactly 60 seconds to answer any question, you know, taking that time to, to try and figure out why they were booing. I happen to think that maybe they were booing the, the whole don't ask, don't tell repeal more so than booing that soldier. But we didn't know that. So that was not the time to try and decipher why was it they, why were they reacting that way. But you don't think that you probably should have said something like, audience, you know, please, a little bit of respect? I did not have that luxury because I was not in control. I was not the in, moderator. In retrospect, would you have done something given the controversy in retros it's touched in, in retrospect, because of the controversy it has created and because of the different interpretations that it could have had, yes, that probably, that would have been appropriate. But at the moment, it was not the focus of the people up there on that stage, I can assure you. And what do you think when President Obama says, this is not the people we are, we're not so small as to boo anybody, much less a soldier serving and defending this country? I would agree with that statement. But I would also challenge the president and his administration for the way they're going about trying to cut costs and, and they basically have a formula that's going to cut costs in the Defense Department. I would describe what he's doing in terms of all of the costs in defense as putting a bullseye on the back of our men and women in uniform. Let so I get, can make that case. Let me get to another uh, question. Yes. On the front page of the Washington Post today, there's a story about uh, Rick Perry yes. and a hunting lodge that belonged to his family bought in the 1980s. And on a rock, apparently near the entrance there, there is a word that is a very ugly racial word, a slur. Yes. Apparently it's been, it's been painted over. But the report raises questions about whether this rock, this stone, uh, with that word on it, was still on display even quite recently in the last several years. What is your reaction to that? My reaction is that is very insensitive. There are some words that do not basically inspire the kind of negativity like that particular word. And I know that you are refraining from saying that word, so I'm going to say what the word was on the rock. The name of the place was called niggerhead. That is very insensitive. And since uh, Governor Perry has been going there for years to hunt, I think that it shows a lack of sensitivity for a long time of not taking that word off of that rock and renaming a place. It's just a basic case of insensitivity. It was painted over. Yes, it was painted over, but how long ago was it painted over? So I'm still saying that it is a sign of insensitivity. Let me move on to some things that you've said. Yes. Right after the uh, debate in Florida, you told Wolf Blitzer of CNN that basically African Americans, blacks in this country, had been brainwashed over the years into supporting Democrats. Yes. I mean, isn't that really an inflammatory thing to say? I mean, do you really believe that African Americans, blacks, are so easily m manipulated? I also said in that no, same interview. No, but let me ask you about that. That, that, that word I, is is very inflammatory. It is. I'm going to answer your question. I also said the good news is a large percentage of black people are thinking for themselves now. I think that if the word is inflammatory, that's too bad. It is true. And here's why. Because some black people won't even listen to someone who appears to be a conservative or a Republican. I call that brainwashing. Some would say that some would say that actually it's because those policies and what you're proposing, for instance, don't meet their demands or what they're looking for. And I say that the reason they don't see them as meeting their demands of what they're looking for is because they have not looked at them. My economic growth and jobs plan, as an example, is not partisan. 
it is a solution that benefits everybody, especially the African American community. Well, let me ask you about that because yes. 999, yes. you talk about 9% corporate, 9% income tax, and right. a 9% national sales tax. Yes. And economists are saying that that could actually disproportionately affect poorer people, African Americans, and all sorts of poorer people. Ask them to do the math. Apparently because, they have done the math. No, they have not because I have done the math. Let me give you an actual example. If you take the medium income of $50,000 a year. But what about $20,000 a year, just, people who are paying less? If it's 20 or 25, just divide by two, okay? I started with the medium income, okay? If you start with $50,000 a year, the same numbers work. You get the same conclusion if they make $25,000 a year. Here are the actual numbers. $50,000 a year under the current system, they are going to pay approximately $10,000 in taxes. It includes the payroll tax. Now, under 999, they're going to pay 4,500, 9% of 50,000. Now, if they that means that they have an excess of about $5,500 because they are now paying 10,000. If they paid a 9% sales tax on everything that they buy, which means they bought all new goods and services, they would still come out $2,000 ahead. So what I'm saying is those economists need to do the math. They're making that assertion based upon wanting to attack it and turn it into a class warfare argument. I want to ask you about something else that, that you've said. Yes. You've said, and we're going to show a graphic, that there's been a creeping attempt to gradually ease Sharia law and the Muslim faith into our government. And now listen to what Governor Chris Christie has said about the fear of Sharia law here in the United States. This Sharia law business is crap. It's just crazy. And I'm tired of dealing with the crazies. So he's saying that those kinds of fears that you espouse and others are crazy. What do you say to that? Call me crazy. But there are too many examples of where there has been pushback. You don't really mean this, though, do you, Mr. Oh, Kay? yes, I do. Sharia law in the United States? Some people would infuse Sharia law in our court system if we allow it. I honestly believe that. So even if he calls me crazy, I am going to make sure that they don't infuse it little by little by little. It's not going to be some grand scheme little by little. So I don't mind if he calls me crazy. I'm simply saying You're sticking to it. I'm sticking to it. American laws and American courts, period. American laws are in American courts. Yes. So the people of yes. this country should be safe for the moment. Exactly. Let me ask you about Chris Christie jumping in. Would you yes. support that? Come on down, as they say, to use Bob Barker's term. And here's why. I respect Governor Christie. He has basically uh, distinguished himself because he's not afraid to tell it like it is, like me. Uh, but he would be another person in the contest. It would still be up to the people. It doesn't concern me in terms of what it might do to my momentum, because one thing that we've learned about people who support Herman Cain, they do not defect. They are not waiting for the next flavor of the week to use someone else's terminology. So it wouldn't bother me a bit.